So today's video is all about sharing my newsletter that I write with you. Um, if you don't know, this newsletter was or is inspired from my old full-time job as a studio manager for a printing and um, agency house in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And every month I would kind of do this check-in email. Um, it was very much like, how are you? Are, do you? are you feeling supported? What can I help with? And then I would list some things that you can do outside of work, like to just stress relief. And when I sent my last one in December of 2022, people responded really well to it, like saying, you know, thank you so much for sending these. You should send them in the future. And it had me thinking, why not just open it up to the public? Um, public meaning I just posted it on Instagram and I now have 19 subscribers. Um, one of those being someone that saw a TikTok video and wanted and then like went to my Instagram about it and that was really cool. So um so January was all about, you know, I am now fully freelance. I'm going to be doing a lot of social media stuff and I just need to get over the idea that um what I'm doing is cringy or embarrassing or anything like that. So my whole email was embrace being cringy for January and um, it's funny there's images involved there's a hot or not list and then the currently like things you can do in and around the city or online some stuff you can read um, so that's really nice and then February quite similar um, like format, there's photos, there's a hot or not list, and then the currently bar at the bottom. But February we talked about community and March is all about New York. I have lived here for about seven years. I came here as a sophomore in college and I went to Parsons and Lang and did like a I don't even know, weird degree because I transferred. I like finished my major at the end of sophomore year. So I just had two years to play and got some other education points, photography being one of them. And since I've moved to New York, I've just been here. You know, summers I would go home to Idaho and then I would come back as soon as I could, like as soon as I could. And then when with COVID, I was out east with my uncles, and then I was in Connecticut for work um, for a bit, and then I was here. And I don't really count going out east and going to Connecticut, like getting out of New York, because um, even when I was there, I still told people I lived in New York, and it was a very high stress environment, so it didn't it didn't garner the relief that I think I would, am looking for. Um, New York is such a beautiful place. Like I was saying, it, it can inspire any type of interest that you have. I was studying something completely opposite and took a 180 when I got here because it just, it pulls you out of you. The, the city pulls all of your interest and is just like, just do it. So um, I'm pulling up the merch newsletter right now. And I think just like with COVID and the stress, um, being a college student and graduating and then taking like a 180 and, and being an, an adult has been a little difficult. Um, in a way where I'm just feeling not, it's not lost, but it's like <clears throat> not grounded, you know? Steps, and now I'm trying to like hold on for dear life. But so in this newsletter, I talk about that. There's this movie 13 going on 30. 
So I'm going to be like 16 going on 26. Um, it starts out with a headline, New York, and it says, have you ever thought of leaving? So I'm like, no. Up until this point, it's always been New York. I've never, but. Then I have a little photo right here um, of Kun Young Lee, the, um, the method of drawing from 1976, and it's just, it's a beautiful photo. The day I turn 26 is quickly approaching, March 19th. With my official arrival into my mid-twenties, I have been doing a lot of thinking of the past seven years in New York. Many memories and friendships built, many, many days spent working, incredible work that has gotten to me on me where I am today and I'm so grateful for it. Curious though, have you found an equation to life? 50% work, 25% personal life, 25% friends. Is there even an equation? Like is that just such a ridiculous question to ask? As we age and learn new ways of life, love and friendship, have we unconsciously become more reluctant to what life has to offer? Meaning when I say that of like you, you kind of see it in the movies, you know, the midlife crisis of like, I wake up, I go to work, I walk a dog, I take the train an hour and a half, or like, I feed the three kids that I don't like. You know, it's like, I don't want to fall into a rut like that, ever. And I feel like working at the 9 to 5 that I had definitely did that. Um, for me, I just wasn't inspired by it. Um, and even though I traded income for like personal freedom of being freelance and being able to do all the work that I want to do during the day instead of at night and on weekends, um, it's been nice, but there is this like, there's no grounding to it because there's <laughs> like no financial uh, back into it and you're kind of just making it up as you go so um, but have we become rely uh, reluctant to what life has to offer the comfortable safe and reliable things those we went to high school with are having kids and while that is not the life I currently want I can't help but find myself nostalgic towards what could have been if I didn't move to New York if I had stayed in Idaho or I don't know, move to Washington State or, I don't know, Oregon. How fun to imagine that I would be happier in a big home with a husband and kids and my worries would include dinner and daycare. It just is, it's so domestic. Um, I include another image here and it's of an apartment, like a dining table. Um, New York has built me into the person I am today, and I am so grateful, truly, but I'm also really bitter. Um, has aging caused me to become bitter? Yeah, probably. I'm only 20, almost 26, so it's like aging, no, or going through a global pandemic without like a a mourning period of the life I had like planned out before that happened. Um, you know, all of the, the problems that we're talking about that I know a lot of people share with me, I always feel a little guilty feeling this way because so many people experience so much loss and hurt and death during COVID. And no one died that I know. Um, I didn't, you know, I lost uh, like kind of traditional experiences like having a graduation um, from college. I graduated in a living room and um, the, while I'm still in contact with the photographer that I had planned to work with post-graduation, and I do work with her currently, it's not in the same setting. It's just, 
And I wouldn't go back and I wouldn't take, you know, the alternative route. Like, I think my life is, is better for experiencing COVID and better for graduating in a living room and like going through that. I really do think so. But for 25 years old, 26 years old, I feel so extremely bitter about the city. I don't find it charming or like inspiring right now. I find it just like dirty and then like there's so many people and I'm just like move out of the way. My New York peers and I were all on the same path of like career first and family later. No one that I know is having kids until they're 35. Like no one here is having a kid before they're 30. Um, we talked <coughs> last month about community and growing. And while I feel deranged to say, I think that the only way for me to nourish my community is to leave it. Um, and this is not like I'm gonna go and like move out of New York. I don't think that's the thing. I had originally planned to go to Sacramento to, my mom lives there, to like stay with her for a second, but um, I don't think that that is a good idea anymore because there's nothing in Sacramento. I think if I'm wanting to leave New York so I can like regain myself and like my adventure for life and my adventure for experience and um, and truly just like want to like wake up and, and really go after it every day. I need to experience other places like Berlin, London. I don't know, it's just kind of tricky, it feels like. I don't even know. The city has taught me so much. It has made me grow up a lot and I'm better for surviving and living through the crap and I would not change it for the world like I just said. But there is this anger, like ang <laughs> anger that the city is stripping away my desires and energy instead of fueling them. There are certain aspects um, I was talking that, to this about my roommate last night of like, I kind of wish that I was as stupid as I was when I first moved here. Um, like kind of just having the ignorance of like, I don't know, having your phone die, being drunk on your ass, coming home on the train, just like all these things. But I think it's more of like my worries were just less serious, I think. Like, um, I don't know, I still do stupid shit all the time. Totally. I would just city bike come drunk for sure. I think there's just the like resilience that I had when I moved here versus now is down. Um, I also like, I had hip surgery in December and I have lupus and so there's like an added layer of like those two things matched with the fact that we're talking about a seven year difference so I get that there even though I am still only 26 there is this gap involved where I'm probably not being the kindest to myself in my current situation um, but there is this fear that if I leave New York, I might end up loving it somewhere else. Not LA. I don't think I'll go to LA or Boston or Chicago, but I am going to Boston in a few weeks. So I think my, I think, I think. My goal with all of this is that 
I need to remember why I love New York. And I need to get out of the city to do that. And that doesn't have to be like in a three month span. I think it's more like two weeks here, two weeks there, a month here. Just to remember of like, there's this beautiful life to live. I am freelance. I get to do what I love to do every single day. I live with my best friends and business partners. I am surrounded by people that love me, that care about me. Like, I live a very, very good life and I'm very thankful for everything that is going on. <clears throat> Just so we have the record straight. <laughs> um, on my hot or not list, we have another image here of Hannah Veet's photography for Massimo uh, Dutti, who is incredible. If you don't know who Hannah um, Veet is, she is basically the in-house photographer for Kate, and she's stunning. Um, her work is amazing. She just had a baby. Love her. So, hot list. Falling out of love with your one true love. Uh, freelance everything, everything. Freelance babysitting. 90 minute hangouts, little quick. And 30 minute hangouts, even hotter. Frozen dates with peanut butter, honey and salt. Uh, magazine tear sheets. And I actually tear them out, which I think is kind of stupid now because I like still have the magazines and then I have all these sheets. Um, take out. Take out is hot because then you can just come home like you're on a date. Even better, on last month's hot or not list, ferry dates. Get takeout, go on the fucking ferry, make out on the roof of the ferry. It is like primo hot shit, okay? Um, the polenta and asparagus at 12 chairs. I had I went to their Brooklyn location in Williamsburg. Fantastic. Babysitting is hot. Being in your mommy era, hot. Yeah. Um, and constantly being dehydrated. Yeah. I don't know where my water bottle is. George Jensen. Cutie. Um, not hot. <clears throat> Nami Nori in Williamsburg. Don't go if you're seated outside. Just wait a month or two until it's warmer or wait for a reservation inside. It's too cold for outdoor, outdoor dining and their outdoor dining area sucks ass. Um, survival mode. Being in survival mode is kind of a constant thing that everyone is in in New York and it's not always a choice. It's not hot. This morning, I didn't go to bed until two last night just because I couldn't sleep. And I slept in an extra hour this morning because I knew that if I didn't, I would be hurting. So there are little things that we can do, but going out. Going out is hot and it's also not hot. Cause if you go out and you find yourself at kind regards, that's not hot. Sexual repression is not hot. Sexual liberation is not hot. <laughs> Sex in general is not hot. The ladies get it. The ladies know. Being a mom is not hot. Although it kind of is though. Mommy era. Um, and then in the newsletter we have another photo from Nylon Magazine, December 2017 by um, Sophia, or of Sophia Kloss by Kate Olson. Owen by Kate Owen. <clears throat> Our currently list. Watch Nan Golden. <sighs> um, her documentary, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, is incredible. It's nominated for an Oscar. It's a documentary <clears throat> about her life, um, but it's a it's special in the way where it's detailing her work 
um, her family and her her artistic work, her family, and then her current work within protesting and call to actions, um, uh, in particular with the her epidemic, with the opioid epidemic. She is an artist. Um, she's one of the artists that was kind of in the in or like living on Bowery in the eighties, nineties, and is just like so fabulous uh, what she does. She really was a pioneer um, for women photographers and she got a lot of crap for being someone to photograph her own life. Um, she'd be told a lot of the time that like women don't do that, like that's a man's job or like what are you doing? Like women don't photograph their own lives and she did and she lived with like these beautiful beautiful people um, in Bowery that are all artists or musicians or actors or whatever and so there was this kind of like this stunning um, portraiture work used typically with flash of what people perceived as like caricatures like for the many times work <clears throat> was construed um, as like a, like the like the people were in a costume or something when when truly they were just being themselves um they were thrifting before thrifting was neat and just a really excellent documentary where then her life shifts to her um personal struggles with opioid addiction and then transitioning that to a call to action um she basically take down the Sackler family, who is very much split within the, uh, like, aiding and abetting the, the opioid addiction through an easy, like, financial gain, and their um, donations and active role in the art community. So the Sackler name is everywhere. They have donated wings, education centers, artwork, um, antiques, everything, not just in New York and at the New York museums and galleries, but it in Paris and Milan, like literally all over the world. Um, about four years ago, they had their first call to action at the Met um, that brought a lot of attention that the people that you're supporting by having that, like taking their money and everything are also killing so many people by um, their advertisements and like lack of proper information about opi opioids and like telling people that it's not addictive when it is highly addictive. So it's really amazing. The Met uh, among other museums and galleries throughout the world have taken down all of the signs that say the Sackler name. They have stopped accepting donations and it was an incredible, incredible film. It's called um, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed. Something to read. The Cutting Cleverness, cleverness of Martha Rossler's Collages. Um, it's an Aperture article written by Lucy McC McCann. Um, the, Arthur, uh, the artist, Martha Rosler, she does an excellent, excellent portrayal of collage. And it's not your typical, like, cut out and tape and, like, do this. It's very, um, it, it's very realistic, you know, almost. It's kind of like a funny uh, depiction. This article shows one where it's um, her face plastered on shipping containers. And it's just interesting. It almost looks like a TV ad or that you would see. I don't know, I love her work. The article's really amazing. You should read Aperture is a great resource for that. Um, view the Richard Avedon exhibit at the Met. I think today is the last day. Um, the Richard Avedon exhibit, it's really interesting, quite underwhelming portrayal of some portraiture work. Um, 
he is a photographer that is known for his fashion photography with Harper's Bazaar and he is kind of like the pioneer of fashion photography um, though the only thing that's really interesting about this exhibit is the paper that it was printed on it's kind of like this waxy it's very very large format um, very interesting and I was kind of guessing on how it was done if it's a double process like darkroom um, print or if they did something else with it. I don't think it's inkjet. I definitely think it's like a dark room film photography style of printing. It's a it's a large Kodak paper that's not made anymore so that's why I think that. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's not much to say on that. Uh, taste. Van Leeuwen's vegan mint chip. That shit is so good. Listen to If I Could Leave by Keenan O'Meara. Um, this song came up on one of Spotify's like suggested weekly playlist, and it's just a very calming and delicious song. Um, to end the newsletter, I'll have a photo here of me when I had first moved to New York. So, thank you for watching all of this. Um, if you have shared similar experiences, let me know because I would love to hang out with you and like grab coffee or um, go on a ferry ride and <clears throat> I don't know, just share the experience together. So I hope you have a wonderful day, um, month life until next week.